So we are um, in the process of switching over all of our computers to uh, the new Windows 10 operating system. And though there are probably a ton of different new features and differences uh, between Windows 7 and Windows 10, I'm sure there are very much fewer of them that are important to you and I as classroom teachers. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the things that I think are important to you uh, that will be different in your experience from Windows 7 to Windows 10. So I think we'll start with probably the most important spot within the operating system, that's the start menu. Uh, the start menu has a different look to it, but it's no different to try and find it. It's in the exact same place it used to be. They just gave it a new, fun, modern icon. Um, it's right down here in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen on the taskbar. Uh, that's that little guy there. You click that, and that opens up your new start menu. So things you'll notice automatically, um, it just looks different, right? Um, and the things that you'll see uh, that are very useful for you is that it keeps the most important stuff towards the top. So you've got your office applications, they always live on this panel here. They're always there. Uh, your web browsers are right here in the center of the, the start menu. And on the left, you have um, kind of a stack of applications. And at the top of your stack are things that you just added to the computer. Below that, you have things that are your most used. So the more that you click and open an application, it'll uh, wind up in the most used section for easier access. Underneath that, the rest of the stack is um, an alphabetical listing of the applications and programs on the computer. So if you're looking for something, you can go by the first letter of its name. So that's not so bad. So there's really not too much different here. It's just a, a matter of layout. Um, so if you're having a hard time finding something, um, you also have the little search option down here which you can pop open uh, and search for a particular application. So if you can't quite seem to find uh, your Sphere uh, program, you can pop in Sphere into the search bar and there it is. The Sphere desktop app is right there for you. Going back to the start menu, um, the other big difference I think and the thing that maybe is going to throw your students for the biggest loop is um, knowing where to go when you're leaving the computer lab and you need to switch users. You know, you know someone else is going to be coming in. You know that you don't want to shut that computer down because other kids will be using it. So you need to go into the start menu and use one of these three icons here. I'll show you how they work. So the very top icon, the little silhouette, is your profile icon. When I click on that, I get options to switch account or sign out. Your kids, when they leave the computer lab, are going to want to sign out. That's going to take them out of the computer, leaving the computer on for someone else to sign in. So that's where you find that. You click on the little profile, you click sign out, and that's going to sign you out of this computer. Underneath it is the gear. Uh, the gear there is for settings, and that's just like your old control panel. So when you click on that gear, it's going to bring up uh, this context menu here, which gives you the ability to change wallpapers and do things of that nature, you know, personalization here. Um, all kind of stuff that you may use sometimes. You probably won't use it too much on a computer that's managed by your school, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But just in case you want to know where it was, there it is. Okay, so one other icon within the start menu that you're probably going to want to pay attention to uh, is when you're done with your computer, it's this power icon. When you click on the power icon, you get a few options. Uh, the one you're probably going to use the most often at the end of the day is shut down. Uh, you can, of course, restart if some issues uh, occur on your computer. One first step usually for me and for most is to try and restart it and see what happens after that. Uh, but that power icon is there. So when you go to shut down your computer at the end of the day, click the power icon and click shut down. So that has, got, has gotten a pretty different look than it used to have. So that might be the thing that uh, throws your kids for the most of a, a loop within the computer lab and you uh, to when you're just kind of looking to well, turn your computer off at the end of the day. Um, so one more time, that's the profile icon at the top to sign out of accounts. That's your kids are going to use that in the computer lab. Uh, and then we have the power icon down below for shutting down your computer or restarting if you need to. So that's the start menu. That's probably the biggest difference. Uh, from there, um, they've gotten rid of the idea of my computer. Now they call it this PC. Um, not sure why they felt the need to make that change. Um, kind of a funny idea to think that, you know, 
they really, really needed to switch that language from my computer to this PC. But anyway, the function is still exactly the same. So if you're looking for your uh, the shared folders, or if you're looking for your your file, your home directory on the server, um, you're looking for the, all the files that you've saved. It's going to be in this PC. So if you double click on this PC, it brings up the menu that looks just about exactly the same as the Windows 7 menu did. The window there, uh, you can see that you have your network locations, your shared. Uh, files here so your actual home directory here for all your stuff that you've got saved and all your shares are here as well you're gonna find the exact same stuff in there as you did before nothing's going to have changed uh, the hierarchy of the folders hasn't changed at all so the same folders are there the same steps to finding them no worries at all you can also see the other um, folder options you have downloads anything from Chrome or Microsoft Edge that you download goes in there Anything that you capture off of your document camera goes to either pictures or captures. So that's really it. So that isn't a huge difference at all. All they've done is said, we don't really think it should be called my computer anymore because maybe it's not actually that person's computer. Let's call it this PC instead. Uh, and that's what we have. We have that new icon, this PC. So you double click and there are your network folders right there. So other than that, and I had my computer switched over from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Uh, within the first couple of days, I ran into a snag that kind of threw me for a loop. Well, there has been a solution proposed for it and put in place, so I can show you now uh, the solution to my problem uh, that couple, first couple of days in. The problem was that there isn't a native, like a, a built-in DVD uh, player playing app uh, for Windows 10. So when um, when I went to put in my copy of Beethoven's Second, or I, I don't even remember what it was, but anyway, when I went to put in my, my movie in the disc tray and went to play it, there was nothing that I could use to play it. But uh, that, that problem has been solved for us. So I'm going to show you quickly what you're going to be looking for when you want to play that DVD. And I'm going to show you two ways to find it. So the first thing you can do, go to your Start menu, and if you scroll down uh, to V in your applications uh, list, you're going to see one called Video LAN. Video LAN creates a, a program called VLC Media Player, and the VLC Media Player is what you're going to use to play any DVD movies you have. So you'll click on VLC Media Player. That's going to bring up a window with a really weird orange cone in the middle, the traffic cone. Um, from here, uh, the process to playing uh, a movie off of a disc is actually pretty easy. You're going to go to the media menu, click on media, and go to open disc. When I click on open disc, here's what I get. Disc selection, DVD. You're going to be able to see it's going to pull um, by default from the right drive. So you don't need to worry about anything else. As long as it's on DVD, you just click play and you'll be good to go. And really more often than not, as soon as you put your DVD in, um, the computer is going to know that you want to play it off of VLC. So it's going to open it um, automatically. So it shouldn't be too much of a thing that you really have to worry about. But if you uh, do need to force something to play a DVD, you can get to it from the Start menu. And then surfing all the way down to V for VLC uh, and pulling it up, VLC Media Player. Now you can also uh, search that. So if you just click on the little uh, magnifying glass tool there and you just punch in VLC, there it is, very first thing, VLC Media Player. And now let's say, okay, let's say that um, I do DVDs a lot in my room. Let's say I have a, a whole collection of movies that I've been using for years with my kids and want to show them uh, a thing. So that's going to be something that I use very often. Well, uh, there's some functions inside of Windows 10 that you can use to make sure that you have the apps that you use the most often readily available to you. So the you can see that the first thing I have here is I have Chrome uh, pinned, well, called pinned to my taskbar. That means that it's there all the time and whenever I want to use it, um, it's there available for me just to click and open. Uh, so if I go into my start menu and I scroll down and I find uh, my V for VLC uh, media player and I right click on it and select more, you can see I get the option to pin to taskbar. And if I pin it to my taskbar, you'll see that automatically that little icon gets added down below. So now if I am a person, I'm a power user of VLC, I'm always using VLC, always showing DVDs, playing media files, it's there for me all the time. I don't need to worry about gunking up my desktop. Um, I can have the apps that I use the most often um, tacked down here to the taskbar. Uh, I click on that, it'll open it up right for me right there. So, 
uh, really, that's about it. That's those are really all the differences that uh, you'll have to worry about uh, between uh, Windows 7 and Windows 10 when you make the switch over. So there may be a couple of other little things that you might find that are just a little bit different. Um, your task bar all the way to the right near the clock has a couple of little icons that might be a little different to you. Uh, the, the volume icon working with audio is just a little bit different. Okay, Not a huge difference there, obviously. Just the way it looks is just a little bit different. Um, next to that, you have an on-screen keyboard. So if you still have a smart board attached to your computer, um, you can click on that guy to bring up an on-screen keyboard. Uh, and at the very end here, we have a notifications panel. And the notifications panel is just a, you know, if you've downloaded something, if something opens up, if something happens in the operating system, uh, you can click on that uh, and kind of get a little rundown of what exactly happened. So there it is. That's about all that's different between um, Windows 7 and Windows 10 that really matters to you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. There's, if there are things that pop up, um, it'd be my pleasure to help you try and figure those things out. Uh, but See if you can't get yourself into Windows 10 and just kind of see the differences for yourself. Um, thanks.